our quest here is at Cinnamon Cooney or Art Sherpa, and I'm so excited about today's quest because we're going to face together some of those fears you've been expressing about skin tones. I'm going to show you some practices that you can do that are going to help you get over those blocks, start to make some breakthroughs, and see some improvement in how you're mixing skin tones today. This is good for every level of painter. Uh, especially if you haven't visited this in a while or you haven't been working on your skin tones or if you're very, very new. And if you're doing the Big Art Quest for me, we're going to be focusing on Brigid, who's coming up for this month's quest. And so, of course, that will help you paint her even better. I've been listening to your feedback, and this is something you've been asking for. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's going to be wrangling my goofiness and also tracking me with camera so you can see everything I'm doing and making sure your questions get asked in the description below. If you go down there, make sure you hit the more button. There's a link to the web page. On that are three awesome epic, probably more to be added soon, but three awesome epic, wonderful practice adventure sheets that you can download and print out yourself to do these exercises. And I think it's gonna blow everybody's mind about the kind of breakthroughs that each of you will discover that you're having along the way. This is like my favorite tip I get to do. Are you doing okay, John? Oh yeah. All right, are we ready to just jump on in? Oh, very much. All right, so y'all notice the thumbnail. This is a future project that we're doing together as a group. And I did a little study strip here so you could kind of see how this is working. What is her face, right, which is, seems very complicated, actually equate to? And I kind of told that story in the thumbnail. But what we're going to do is we're going to have the best time. We're going to use one of my very favorite little tricks. It wasn't really a trick so much as something I learned to do, which is how to use the study practice. I did this on a different face I did a while back. Using this practice to be able to understand what I'm looking at here. So I'm not getting overwhelmed here. Now down at the bottom of this practice page, you're gonna see that I've got a grayscale going from one to 11. It doesn't really have a white and it doesn't really have a true black. And that's because in my experience, skin tones rarely have a true white or black unless there's like a high crazy light on it or they're in deep, deep, deep shadow for the most part we have kind of a chromatic white and a chromatic black. And what I mean by that is we don't use the actual white or the actual black. These are colors that for the purposes of the painting read as black to us or read as white to us. And these little numbers down here, this is actually kind of a secret sauce. And I have her little face here so you can practice this exercise. And this is about getting in there, starting to mix the skin tones, see where they are in the value scale. Is it our darkest color? Is it our lightest color? Is it somewhere in the middle? Does it match her face? And you use these balls to be able to get a sense of what colors we're mixing through her face. Are you guys kind of excited? Very much so. Also there on the worksheets for free, we have this wonderful challenge. If you guys are in our big art quest, I hope you're definitely gonna do it. I'm gonna do a couple here for you. This is a pretty full range of skin tones for you to match. And your challenge for this is to print this out and to try to match these colors with your paint, try not to buy anything new because you've got to see where you're at. Use what you have. And then if you're really, really missing something, you're like, oh my gosh, I need some nickel titanate or Naples yellow or light yellow or warm yellow, or something that you're seeing that you're really missing. But get in there first and make sure you're not already good. This is fine for craft paint, watercolor, pencil, any of this. These exercises will work great. My tip to you is, is if you're doing acrylic, which is what we're doing today, the glossy paper is your friend, right? Because it'll, you can paint acrylic right on top of it, which is nice. And as a special treat, I gave you an open practice sheet. Now what this is about is like, so say you have a portrait coming up or you have something coming up and it's maybe a skin tone you're not familiar with and you wanna practice it, you don't want to work it out on the painting. Several of you wrote right away saying, I have this commission. I have this gift I'm giving to a friend. This is going to help you through that because you can practice here and see on her face how it's working out. And you can do this for any skin tone, right? So between these three tools, you should be pretty hooked up. I also included a link to my very favorite book for beginners on skin tone mixtures. This is Color Mixing Recipes. I don't have anything to do with this publisher. 
I have always had this book. I tend to buy their books. They're wonderful and I recommend them to, to people because they're sort of available everywhere. You find them in resale, you can find them you know, online, but you may just run into one and if you know you're looking for it, you know you're looking for it. Of course, there's a link to the Amazon down below so you can just grab it right now. But this is just one of those great kind of um, finds that you can find at a garage sale, at a resale shop, at a half price bookshop. Okay. Very cool. And when she, that's like, there's really good recipes in here. He uses some weird colors that I don't use, but the principles to it really, really help me. I'm so ready. Oh, the next thing we have to talk about, and it's a very, very dangerous subject. You ready? Hmm. I don't know. The different types of white. Oh, white yes. White paint. It's a big deal. So listen, if you're doing skin tone recipes, you've got to have a couple times of white. I know my whites look like they have been through a war zone, and they kind of have, but... They've been on tour. This is the Titan Buff, which is, in all other paints, call it unbleached titanium. This is actually the only true pigment on the market. Um, unbleached titanium is just a hue of this, but this was actually a color that uh, Sam Golden invented. Then we have zinc white and we have titanium white. I do think it's important to have a selection of whites and then also yellows. I think it's important to have cool yellows and warm yellows. So see, I've got like some nice nickel titanate yellow and I have some Indian yellow. So this is like almost an orange and this has almost a green to it. And if you're not familiar with the cool and warm concept we're discussing, when artists talk about color, let me get the top, my yellow hair, right? They're talking about this thing, the color wheel. Mm -hmm. And this idea was kind of discovered by this guy who's sort of famous for this other thing, gravity, but really what he did that was super important is he figured out that white light is all the color. <laughs> and then there was a little wheel and then we could all talk about it. And I'm so grateful for that. But the gravity is good too. <laughs> Anything between the purple... And really through here in the green, we often refer to those as cooler colors. And all the stuff from the yellows to the reds, we go warmer colors. And if you kind of think of it as like fire and ice, that's all we're saying. If you do makeup, think about it. You'll say to your friends, well, I have kind of a blue undertone to my skin. Or you'll hear someone say, I have a little bit of a yellow undertone to my skin. What they're really saying is that my skin tone is a little bit cooler, is a little bit warm. Hmm. And there's a lot of skin tone as that one worksheet. And that doesn't even touch it. That's just to get you started. There's a lot of skin tone <laughs> in the world. All right, I'm ready to get on in and show you how to use this worksheet. Show me. While I'm doing that, John can say hi and see if you guys have any questions. Hi, guys. How are you doing? They are, they are doing actually really good. I've been out here, out here watching the chat as they've been, as they've been going. In. And, you know, what we got, th what's really amazing is I love how many people come to join us for these types of, of, of uh, projects. And uh, it's just really, really, really awesome. So I love you guys. Now, they did have a quick quick question here. I have answers for like uh, a lot of it because it's a big topic, isn't it? You know, on, on the colors, does, do these colors also work in watercolor? Yeah. Yeah. This will work in watercolor pencil. If you're doing this in watercolor, uh, print it out on a heavy card stock to use the worksheet or if you're doing it in colored pencil. It's really essentially the same principle. If you're doing this in female clay, it would be a lot of work. But it's the same principle, <laughs> trying gotcha. to match mixing up your clay and like tapping it down to the face. Am I close? Am I close? But it's that kind of idea of saying, is what I'm seeing what I'm seeing? Hmm. I know. It seems like a silly, nonsensical, you know, the center is the well, middle kind of I, thing that people say. But I, it's I will really say, true. We're, we're doing a pretty good job actually covering all the questions. But they have a couple of comments. I think, one, your jacket is awesome. And oh, two, thank you. they want me to tell you how radiant you look today. Oh, thank you. So there was there were quite a few comments that were coming up. And they were saying, "I better pass it on, or I'm going to get in trouble." <laughs> so, well, I don't want you in trouble. I, don't, I certainly I don't wouldn't either. want you in trouble for any reason. And I don't mind saying how radiant you look today. Oh, thank you. Now, one of the things I'm looking at here is her skin tone. When I look at it, to me, it looks very cool. Actually, I did check that. It is cool. And what that means is instead of like an orange red, she's got a cool red, like an alizarin in her. And that's because she's an Eastern European cool tone skin mix. Whoa. Now, what's interesting is I have picked this model a lot for the Big Art Quest as my reference. And she actually is from Eastern Europe. 
Right. So the fact that her skin is Eastern European is verifiable. But if I didn't know who she was, I would know a little bit about that she has some of that her genetic makeup. Because mm-hmm. when I see her skin, it's quite fair, but it's also quite cool. Yeah. Bu- 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 bu. And I have lots of little tools out here. When you look at any sort of skin tone recipe book, you're going to see like a lot of stuff. I think um, for her, I will still do the burnt sienna, even though it's warmer, but I've got the burnt umber. And we're going to start with what's called a master mix. I've got to create a master mix of skin tone that I think is going to get me to what I need to do for her. And that's generally a couple of colors that I'm going to mix together. They're going to let me get kind of close to her skin range. And then by lightening them, warming them, you know, because I've got my Indian yellow, I've got my nickel tight knit. If you didn't have that, it's really easy to find a cad yellow light. You don't necessarily have to do cad yellow warm. So these things are easier than you might think. And I'm also probably going to throw... Uh, I think some quinacridone in there. It's my little secret weapon because I just never know what I'm going to have going on. And I think you guys, have if you have Naples yellow, that's a really good choice. It's a good alternative, actually, to the Titan buff. And you don't have to have all these colors. You could just have uh, basic colors, too. I'm just showing you how we would get through this. Right? So here we go. Did I leave my palette knife anywhere? Yes, it's right there. So to get a master skin tone, I'm going to pull out some yellow, right? And I'm going to pull out a little bit of red because she's quite fair and she's European. So her base skin tone is going to be some range of pink. Now, when, you, when you're talking about warm and cool, yes. how, how, is there an easy way to check for that to know warm or cool? There actually is, but that's going to be a whole other video. What I'll say is, is a lot of times you can uh, punch a hole in a color wheel. You punch holes. I haven't done it. I'm going to make one. I'm going to show you how. You punch your hole in these. But a lot of times you can be like, well, she doesn't seem really yellow. Oh, this, this is starting to seem closer. You can hold colors next to this. And you'll start to see that this really, it, it feels discordant with this, doesn't it, almost? Hmm, yeah. But you come closer to here and it starts to feel more fluid. Now, I have, this is a children's color wheel. I have, of course, I have adult ones. But I think sometimes it's good to simplify things down, right? Doesn't that feel like almost too much? Yeah. But as soon as we go into the cool colors, right? And you'll do this sometimes, you know, even with your own skin. You'll notice that when you put on makeup that some of them will feel very orange once they're on your skin. Hmm. So that's where I'm going to like, I'm going to start with her. I'm going to say this is like a good beginning, right? Now... If this is, let's just say this is sort of an, an, an orange, right? In skin tones, we like to gray them out because they tend to be too saturated, right? So it's not just adding black or white to lighten it. And so I can sit there and say, all right, I could use blue to cool my skin tone. I could use a violet or I could use a green. And you'll see artists do that. You'll be like, why is there green in that skin tone? It's because they're trying to cool it down. And so I probably will... Do a blue. Maybe I'll, I'll pro- did that bring out a Prussian? Yes, I did. No, nope, of course I didn't. Any blue. <laughs> Any blue will do. <laughs> we'll have an exact mix for her on, on the morrow. But the point is, is that you're cooling her down. You got to cool her down on occasion. I really want a Prussian. I'm going to grab it. I don't know how I got out of there without a Prussian. There's not enough little captured Prussians. Um, a lot of skin mixologists really like cerulean, which is why I have it out. You're going to find that everybody sort of gets a recipe. They get this sort of little little thing going, and they're like, I think I'm going to actually do do this other thing, and and that's what I'm going to go for. What yellow were you using there? Uh, this actually is nickel tightened, and I've got some tightened buff out here. This is just to show you a full range. Mm, okay. We'll do simpler mixes on her tomorrow because she's a figure in a large overall landscape, but this gives us a nice way to start to try to match areas of her skin. So what you're going to do when you have your basic master skin tone recipe. I know it sounds bad, but that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're gonna put a little on a brush. This is a number two um, ruby satin. And when you're painting faces and you're painting skin tone, heavy body paint is quite thick. A lot of people prefer like very smooth artist panels 
and they prefer fluid paint, the kind that comes in bottles because it's self-leveling and it smooths. All right, let's see where we're at. They so were looking for, you know, how we're doing. Right, and then you can kind of see where is this mix? Oh, there we are. We make this quite dark. Look at that. So you could sit there and say, I'm quite dark. This is where my master mix that I just made sort of lives, isn't it? But for her, it's just a little bright. It's just a little, it's just a little too much. So one thing that I can do is I can take my Prussian into my burnt umber, no, burnt uh, sienna, and I can add a little of my master mix into it and see if I can't find that shadow color. All right, is this closer to our shadow color that we've got going, you know, right here? It's a lot darker, but is it closer? So if I want to see if it's closer, if I mix it with titanium white, it's going to be too overwhelmed by the pigment, which is why I like to have some zinc around. And I'm going to see if I can get closer. Up oh, there it is, All right? So now, is this a is this a ten or is this our eleven? You know, it still seems like that's where we're going to actually be with that. So now we know where our shadow color is, and that'll help me know where that's going on my my ball. And one thing that I can do once I have a color like oh I know this is a good shadow color, I'm going to take a bigger brush and kind of pull all that out again because that was super fun. This is a really great way for you to take the paint you have. You're going to want a yellow. You're going to want some reds. You're going to want some whites and you're going to want some way to cool it. I would definitely say like a, a blue or a grayed out green is a great way to go. Mm. Right. I just go right here. Getting some nice zinc in there. And then you're going to come and you're going to say, all right, this is my shadow. Now I'm going to add some glazing medium to this because I'm painting on this weird paper surface and that's going to help it flow over that. It's good to have a little glazing medium or a retarder when you're painting skin tones because it can be very tough to blend. And I'm going to show some blending stuff while we're here, right, as we go. I'll just take this up to right about here. We're just going to keep getting our little shadow color in there as we go. And you get pretty good at getting to the mix, mixing it again and again, and you're like, oh, this is my little shadow color. I get it. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've got going on. A lot of times people will look at a photo, they'll look at something, they'll look at a reference, and they don't remember that they can come and like, you can see we came real close here, that they can check the mix against the photo. How close are you? Mm. I mean, it's really great to paint from life, but sometimes that's not practical, right? I certainly don't recommend against it. It just isn't always practical. So a lot of times when I'm mixing through skin tones, I don't necessarily want to rinse out my brush as much, right? I'm just wanting to, you know, lighten or darken. So another little, I'm going to come over here with just my main mix. and I'm going, hmm, that seems a little red for me. So if I get into my unbleached titanium, watch this go. The Titan Buff. See? Look at that. Powerful stuff. And this way when I'm whitening it, well, I'm lightening it, but I'm not lightening it without any sense of, you know, it coming out too creamy or any of those things. And you can always check against her face and be like, where's this at? Where's is any of this good, you know? Look and see where you're at. It's right there. Whoop. Isn't that interesting? Well, let me get down there. I, I'm, I'm, there we go. Now, where, where is this color at? And can you start to see how this is telling you what your dark colors are for your shadows and what your light colors are? Yeah. Skin tone is not going to be one even uniform space. I'm going to use my glazy medium to get a nice blend here. Skin tone absolutely is a lot of value. 
And remember, and this is super important, your reference might have a warm skin tone, but have cool shadow or light reflected on them, which can also impact your subject. Oh. This is another reason it's nice to sort of check it against what you have. We have an in-studio way of demonstrating that, remember? Do we? I don't remember. Because right now you have, um, you have the white light reflector mm. on you. That's right. If you flip it over, it's that crazy gold light. That makes you look like you're very warm, like you're in a <laughs> sunset. <laughs> so it much so like, like you're standing in front of a bonfire is what it makes it look like. <laughs> it, it warms you up a lot. <laughs> As I'm moving into her cheek, I'm going to add a little more of my alizarin in here just to pink it up. There, I'm taking this over. And let's lighten it up. We can get with the zinc and lighten, lighten, lighten. But come with a little titanium. Like, this is a really powerful tool. We'll mostly sit with this tomorrow because, again, we're just doing a whole landscape. But these are extra little things that you can get in there. Into your mix-up. I can come and get a little titanium white now in there and really lighten it. Yeah, you can really, really lighten with titanium white. Look at that light. If you need to gray your, like, cool your skin tone in, just grab a little bit of the Prussian mix that we have over here. Look at that. Cools it down. This is fun stuff. So I can, oh yeah, can come here and say, where's this? Oh, let me scroll down. Oh, it's at my three. See, oh. I've just mixed my three. Mm -hmm. It just tells me a lot about where, it's not going to be the, the highlight on her face is here at the nose, above the lip and at the cheek, right? And you can sit there and say, well, what is this at? Oh, this is, that's about a three. So you're really, when you're shading a face, you're shading kind of the ball because the face is a round shape, which is why the ball can be very helpful in determining where a highlight or a low light could go. Right, there we go. It's, it's shocking how much that actually looks like. It just never feels like it's going to work and then it always works. So this high highlight here, I'm going to do something crazy with. Now, if I didn't have the nickel tightening, I would definitely warm this with my yellow ochre. And I'll show you that, but then I'm also going to show you this because I love this as a tool. So I'm just adding more titanium white until I get quite light. And I'm going to see, are we close there? Right, and where are we here? So we're close here, so we're probably more like in this range right here. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. And that'll help us with this. But it's too dark for this here, isn't it? So we haven't quite found our super highlight color. Now there's micro mixes. You'll hear portrait artists talk about this. There's micro mixes all over. This shadow is a little violet right here. And this shadow goes more towards the brown. And when you start to get into this, You'll be like, wow, I'm seeing it now. I didn't see it before, but I'm seeing it now. Now I've got this little ball. It's looking like her face. I'm going to kind of wipe my brush. I need one more light up. And if you do the, if you have this, you don't have to have it, but it's a wonderful tool. I'm going to go right into it. Right, right here. It's just, it's like capturing little bits of sunlight. There we go. See if we got it light enough. It looks like we did. And there is our range. And that would be our highlight on like our nose or our lightest skin. Mm. Now, if I'm mixing lips, right, that can be another problem too, can it? Because I've got my darkest shade right here and my light shades here. How do I get those? Because lips really are hard for people. They think of terms in lipstick, right? Instead of thinking in terms of highlight, highlight, shadow, reflected light here, another shadow, and shadow here. And the fact that the upper lip will be darker than this lower lip in general. And you see this almost violet shadow coming off here. So what you can do there is I like to take a little of my quinacridone and my alizarin. 
and get those mixed together before I even go into my yellow ochre. We're going to get a little lip color going here. I feel like her lips, like her face, can be a little bit cool, so I'm going to cool it with just a smidge of Prussian. Smidge being key and operative term. I'm going to see how I'm doing. There we go. Isn't that crazy? So you can take this color and say, all right. You know, I think it even needs to be a little cooler than that. I might even get a little cooler into it. There it is. There it is. Glazing medium is going to help me here. Here we go. A little bluer. Once you start using this tool, right, you can absolutely start to break down your portraits. Just a little bit more. And see them in a different way. You know, like as you're going, you might be like, I think there's a little more yellow in here. And you can grab your white or your zinc or. This is awesome. Everything you've got. See, I've warmed that up because we're getting, you know, it's cool. That's a little more in lights. That's a little more warm. Get a little more zinc on here. I love zinc for lips. All right. It's very fun. It's super transparent. Come here. And if I need a light light, I can just come in and just get a lot of my zinc on there, or even my titanium white. And then find a lip color. Can we see our little lip range now? Yeah. So from our very, very darkest, darkest area, right, through our middle range, you know, and remembering to cool it, you can get quite a lot done. And if you feel like, oh, I just feel like I'm, I'm missing a middle tone, you can come right in here. And change it up. Now suddenly you have some control and you haven't even touched, there we go. You haven't even touched your portrait yet, but you're starting to see it in a different way. Yeah. This worksheet is for you for free on the website. Print it out. If you're doing watercolor or pencil, print it out on a nice cardstock. If you're doing acrylic, I find photo paper, I mean, it's resistant a little bit to, yeah. uh, to the paint, but I can get it on there enough to see what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. And then you can take these colors and paint fun florals like this, because why wouldn't you? So that's what they look like in watercolor. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Crazy like that. <laughs> I'm going to rinse out my brush, and we're going to look at our next worksheet. Right? Our next one. I ideally, your challenge is try to get a full range of colors from the darkest shadow through, um, you know, if you can, because you might not have it on here. But it might be somewhere else. It's always nice to see if you can get it. Another challenge is to get exactly what you see here. Go, how many shades do I have? So depending on what you're doing, right? Like, you know, you might be like, oh, I need this shade for right here. You might go ahead and get that whole run. You can run another set of colors like the lips on the numbers above when you're done with the skin tones. And then you have a reference guide. And if you write down what you're using, you're going to be able to see really quickly, oh, this is a good mix. Um, oh, my mix is too warm. If it looks like orange on her skin, it's too warm. You need to use a cooler red. Um, when you're using the, uh, the Walter Foster book, you're going to notice he really likes him some different reds than we use. And that's just how he gets his cool red. Now, this is some hard art science. This is some hard art science. It's like, it's like this is what you go to. <laughs> you go to art science lab and you learn about pigments versus dye versus yeah, you fugitive could, you could versus give somebody twenty thousand dollars to go get this worksheet and talk about this stuff or you can just <laughs> this is good stuff i mean i really this. i really enjoyed watching this come together okay so next so like next we have these all these different kind of colors right and how do you mix these how do you get there what's happening for these different skin tones can you get them light enough can you get them dark enough you know how can you you know get to this how could you get to espresso i've got some burnt umber 
So I'll throw that in the mix if I can find it because I know I brought it out. That's the thing. Oh, there it is. All right. I got some really dark, dark yeah. skin tone. Can so you re you can review the colors that you're going to have out here, right? Before yeah. we go to this next part. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make sure these are all in the description. But honestly, on this, I'll tell you exactly what I used. And I'm going to tell you what my favorite things are. Even if I don't like Nessus, I like use them in some videos, but I'll... Or if I have something that I just personally is, I'll tell you. I won't hide it from you. But the real goal here is to sit there and say, probably you have some paint. Maybe you have the 48 set from a particular paint maker. Maybe you have craft paint. Maybe you have pencils. Maybe you have watercolor. Maybe you have primaries, right? Yeah. But from what you have, what can you do before you go to the store? Because I don't want you guys running out to the store and running. I mean, I do want you to run out to the store because I would never stop anyone from art shopping. But before you go, know what you have. And it'll really help you target, well, I'm going to get some zinc because all I have is titanium and it is making my colors chalky and I want something a little more translucent. Or I'm going to get some Titan Buff or uh, the um, Naples Yellow, the one on Golden. So there's a bunch of Naples Yellow as Naples Gate totally revealed to us <laughs> the one that looks like a band-aid is what most people think of of naples yellow the one i like is nickel tighten it just something you might not know i you know dark skin i'm gonna go for it Should man there was a it? lot of words around yellow that you just said that i sort of understood yes me too <laughs> me too there's a lot of color the story of the human race is a story of pigment uh, trade routes all of that it's one of the first things we did one of the first things we traded Ochre, when you paint with ochre, you paint with the color of your ancestors, like all the way back to the beginning of man. Because hmm. uh, we like to paint with dirt. <laughs> it's what we do. I have some burnt umber and some alizarin crimson. I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to mix those together. All right, and that was nice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a very dark skin tone. Dark skin tones can really, really, really throw people. And so, you know, being able to go through a full range of skin tones means that you can do whatever you want from your paint box, from your adventure kit. You know, I've got my little palette knife here and see how this is. So I'm going to say it's probably, it's close, but it's, well, no, actually it's pretty close. So that was just a Lizarin Crimson and um, Burnt Umber. Right? If I wanted to go even darker... Like, like, I used to have friends from Nigeria, and their skin was so dark. It was extraordinary. And it was very, very cool. In other words, like, there was, there was this, like, incredible, incredible range there. Let's see, so see if we can cool the skin with a little bit of Prussian Blue. All right, get a little even darker. See how we're going? So I can... Get it one shade darker even from this with that Prussian blue. And if I wanted to do a shade lighter, would I add white to that? No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of times what happens when you just lighten with white, I'll show you. Like, So say I took some white and added it to that beautiful skin tone. Right? I'm going to get this pink color. That doesn't go here at all. It almost goes like maybe here, here. And this isn't really a color I'm going to see on somebody who has a truly dark skin tone, am I? Hmm. What I'm going to see is reflected light and m like, m like value changes, right? So I can sit there and see if my zinc will let me keep my value, like keep the color that I have, and maybe just give me a slightly shaded up value. Like, this would be like a light, light color. And see if that feels. Doesn't that feel more natural to the skin there? I think so. Let me zoom in on that. Right? See, here's where we are. Yeah. That's ashy. That's a, like a highlight. That's a shading. It's and then if you really, really, on very dark skin, have to show a brighter, brighter highlight, my two senses is look at the reflections on the skin. If they're warm... Right? I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, nickel tighten it. Right? I'm going to come right into here. They will actually probably be like either this is like some yellow light on there. And if it's a cool light, a lot of times people do gray. But I would actually go 
kind of like more pressure it into my skin tone, put a little of my skin tone in there and then get into my zinc. This is my personal favorite for reflection if I'm painting somebody with very, very dark skin tone is blue. Wow. But I don't just lighten and darken it with black and white. I really look at what I'm seeing, where, what is the reflection and how can I micromanage. So your challenge on this, right, is to just, to the best of your ability, go through and match those colors. They're free on the website, so print out as many as you like. <gasps> You're welcome to share they're them free? in the dark quest. <laughs> yes, aren't they pretty and they're free. <laughs> and where are they at? They're on the website. You can find the link in the description below. You just click to it and it'll have this video. It'll have these worksheets. You just click them and they're a PDF and you print them out on your printer. Gratuitous self-marketing. Where is it at? If on our website? If you don't have a printer, look at the screen, paint on a sheet of paper and hold it up. How close are you? Don't let your circumstances limit your opportunities. Yes. And you That's can find why those this is not a big push to go buy a bunch of stuff. Yeah, you can find all that in the links in the description below. Right. So, so say you're doing just anything. You're just you're just painting a face and you're just trying to get a skin mix and you're trying to see how it works, right? And how you're gonna do it, and maybe you're not yet that confident. Right? So say you've taken maybe your uh, yellow ochre and your quinacridone makes a very nice base skin tone. Right? Very nice warm European skin tone. A little more quinacridone, just one of my faves. And then I'll show you my secret, secret fave. Actually, maybe I should show you my secret, secret fave. <laughs> but I like this one a lot. This is a good, simple way to start, right? So that's a nice little, that's a nice little skin color there, right? So what you can do then is you can take your base mix, say, all right, this is my base formula, my master mix. And you can see, like, where is that on the range? Right? You think it's maybe right about here on your grayscale. Oh, yeah. Right? And then you can be like, well, what would my cooling color be? I really like this uh, umber and alizarin we just mixed, so I'll add that in there. And I'll cool the skin tone with that. Isn't that nice? Hmm. So there's a nice cooler shadow. All right, there. Oh, isn't that perfect? Oh, yeah. So there we go. I've got that. So maybe I take that cooler shadow and I add a little zinc to it. I can even come right here and go there. It's nice in here. Get some, you know, you can add a little white there as you're going. Light it up again. And then I'm going to add a little white to it again. Maybe that's a little too white, right? Is that too much of a shift? So if it is, you can just work this half tone in there. Mm hmm. Now, Olivia had a really interesting idea. Hi, Olivia. She's like, I'm going to laminate my print offs. You can laminate them. And then she can just wipe the paint off and try it again. You can wipe the paint off and try it again. I think that's a brilliant idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make some laminated ones. I have no problem with that. I would, if I had them, if I had a brick and mortar shop and I was selling these, that's probably what I would do. <laughs> okay. Here I come. Here I come. Here I come. Look, I'm getting lighter and lighter. It's like almost, and get a little more white into it. And now you're starting to see your scale, wiping off my brush with a lot of pigment, for what it is, right? Your, your color scale. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes color confuses our eyes and it feels like something is much darker than it is on the gray scale. How I did this was the skin color scale I made, I just took the color out of it. So these are accurate. That way it could demo how our eyes kind of fool us. Hmm. 
right? How do our eyes kind of fool us? There we go. Make up a mix of skin tone and see if you can get a full range of values. Right. <coughs> and, you're in, and the value is what you're, you're focusing on here, not right. so much necessarily your tone. There's so many skin tones. What does this book say? This book says color mixing recipes, 500 color combinations for skin, lips, and hair. Okay, so now just so 500. I want to make sure so that everybody understands the word that we're using. Tone is the range from light to dark. Okay, so hue, right, yeah. is the color it is. This hue is this very, very light pink. This hue is this dark, dark, deep shadow kind of alizarin, right, that we yeah. need. Value right or tone can be this dark to this light saturation or chroma right is how much colors in it so if i wanted to do a study of that i would gray these colors out right by like doing gr probably for this one i would pr probably gray it with green i'll show you what i mean so much science. I would, gr because that's where it would be on the color wheel. And I can look at my color wheel. How do I know how to gray my skin tone? If oh. I have a warm skin tone, right, that's in the kind of red-orange range, right, then I'm going to gray over here. If I have a very bright light skin tone, I'm going to gray over here. If my mm. skin tone is very cool, I'm going to gray over here, right? And if it's got, like, more of those reds in it. That's how these artists, these brilliant, brilliant portrait artists, now by sight, they kind of know it. They're looking at their skin and they're going, oh, I need a little green to gray that out. They don't just hit it with green. I mean, they kind of like, they generally, what they do is they'll hit it with like some part of the skin tone mixture, right? And a little bit of the green, which starts to gray it out. So there it is in the shadow. This is the grayed out shadow, right? Yeah. So then you could come right here. And see what your values look like if you're graying the color, you know, as you're going. You know, you're going, you're, you've got this nice little graying of the color. Like that. And you just go all the way across, same thing, but you've got that green in the mixture. That's what's happening on skin. It's kind of also what's happening on your grass and your trees and all of that. And we'll do worksheets like this on all those things. Because I think if you guys figure out what paint you have and how it mixes and what it does, and you have the practice sheets, then you can go. Now, on this sheet, what I want you to do is fill out your charts, get your mixes, see if you can do, you know, your lips and your skin on your balls, and then use those mixes on her face. Hmm. See how it looks. Is it working out? Are you recognizing that, you know, so where does she have highlights? I'm going to use my paint to talk about where she's going to have her highlights, right? Her highlights. So if she's got light coming here, she's going to have some highlight here. She'll have some highlight here. Maybe there'll be some right there. Something on this chin, right? The lip. We've got a little highlight right here. Already there's some stuff happening on her face, isn't it? <laughs> it's just like her face starts to take shape. We know she's going to have some shadows where? Well, we know she's going to have some shadows like under here. And, you know, under her nose and at the, the crease of her lip. You can start to go, okay, where's my highlight? Where's my shadow? You can practice using what you've learned here, here. Areas where the skin is thin will often show, like, undervalues. Like, that's why you'll see, like, a nose will be red or the area around eyes will be red. Right? You can practice crazy lighting. You can practice fantasy skin tones. Right? So I'm trying to paint the green girl from Star Trek. How do I do that? Mix it out here. Test it on her face. Cool. So those are things. You want to work on your freckles? Work on it here. You see a makeup tutorial? Follow it and mix it on the face. I do that. Follow them in Suki. Mix it on the face. That's what you do. That is your quest this week. And that's what's going to get us ready for the next of everything that we're doing on our skin tones for the big art quest. Do we have any questions while I sip my coffee before we go? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to go back up here. Uh, so Carly was just asking, would doing an umber wash be helpful for this? 
Yes. Yes. That is another good thing. Carly, you rock. Everyone say hi to Carly. Art high fives, Carly. Art high fives, Carly. Yeah, that's another good thing. If you're familiar, if you're not familiar with the idea, I hope I have some umber so I can show it. Now, y you're acrylic wireless. artists, my friends, my friends. In general, acrylic artists did not do uh, uh, washes because it underbinds our paint. So we would have to work a little harder for our value studies. Another, oh, I think I have a backup one. So let me show you on a clean one what an umber wash looks like. An umber wash is me practicing understanding my shading and value without color. So I take a pure color like burnt umber. Now I can use a glaze now because acrylic artists have airbrush medium and glazing medium and that lets us do an umber wash. And I can start to shade out my face with this paint, creating my shape value. Right? And I can just work my brown. I'm just going to do her neck here to show you what I mean. Or I could have done it on the ball, which also would have been <laughs> probably <laughs> super easy. <laughs> you know, a little less troublesome. So what oil painters used to do is they would do a value study in, in an umber wash or um, a neutral monochromatic color, right? And then from that, they would assess like the lights and darks of a painting before applying color, kind of like our grayscale here, you know. And then once they had that, they would come over and colorize it. You know, let's put some white on there. Need to lighten it up. But you can come here and you can work that out, can't you? I would do it. I would do the umber study on the ball. I don't know why I didn't just do it on the ball. But that's going to be about you practicing. Do I know what part of my face needs shadow? Do I know what part of my face needs highlight? Mm. Right? But by doing it on this face, you're removing the need to be um, so uh, linked to a reference in that moment. So you can see, you can kind of test yourself and see... How am I doing? What information am I retaining permanently in my creative right brain? And what information do I still need to be referring, referring to? So this is a great way for you to practice. I hope you guys like this new thing. This is amazing. I've really, really been wanting to do something like this. Um, I think that these are going to be really, really great. And we're going to practice uh, different ones. Thank you for the suggestion, Carly. That was really, really good. Grab my coffee. Last question, and then I'm gonna see what these are really soon. Okay, I'm gonna scroll back up here. Okay, these are just, they're just going back over this. Uh, boom, boom. Everyone is having such a good time. They're really saying that they really appreciated uh, just sort of this. Uh, I'll just say in general, uh, because I know you don't get to read the chat, so I'm just yeah. gonna take a step back and say what people really appreciated was that the the complexity of what you're going over here. There's just not a lot of good studies on this and you've kind of broken it down here so that it's really easy for people to understand. This is a dip your toe in moment. Portraits, it's deep water. This, but the problem is, is the water is so deep, where do you start swimming? Yeah. Right? Where do you start swimming? 500 skin tone recipes. That's overwhelming, isn't it? Start with one. So... See so if you can match some colors here. These aren't 500. It's not so many, it, but it's a good beginning. I mean, at least it takes you from like some light skin to some dark skin, warm skin, cool skin. Yeah. That's so it. you can start to dialogue. Yeah. Sherry, everybody else out here, they're all saying thank you. This is really that primer. This is that good place to start. It's a good place to jump in. The face is overwhelming. Keep it to a ball. Sometimes mm -hmm. the ball is simple enough for you to see it. And it can, it can really help. It can really, really help you recognize what your eyes are trying to tell you. Because <laughs> your brain and your eyes are having this conversation and you're like, I know it's there, but I'm not getting it out. This will help you get it out. Yeah. I can't wait to see what you do with your worksheets. Feel free to share them on Facebook and the Big Art Quest or pin them to the webpage. It's all free. That's all for you to do. We're going to meet back up now that we have this kind of information and start 
our wonderful Briga Quest because I think we're ready to do her. And we'll keep visiting these sort of drilled in topics where we'll just talk about these fun fundamentals, this, the, the great playfulness that is our practice pages. Yeah. Play on them. Don't take it too serious. Just be playful because like it's a ball and it's a, it's a face. It's going to go well. <laughs> be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Paint all the skin tones. And I'm going to see you with these really soon. Bye-bye.